God created this for man. Man created this for God. Community Christian Church, 1944 South Jackson Street, Frankfort, Indiana. Come, join us. Usually on Father's Day, I, I think about, well, what to preach, what to preach. You know, I'm a man and a father and all that, and boy, it's whew, lots of thoughts. On Mother's Day, we usually come and cry, and we send flowers and candy and have that phone call and talk to Mom. <laughs> on Dad's Day, Father's Day, we usually get a lecture, don't we, guys? You're not this. You ought to be doing this. You lazy slug, why don't you help your wife more? Oh, I don't know if that's the way it actually works. How many of you had a dad? 100%. I was wondering which one of you is going to go. When it comes down to this, I got to tell you that pride really messes with a guy's life. I think it does for women too, but I, I can only speak for men. Why in the church full of men? You know, I, I really believe today it's harder than ever as a man to go to church. And I'm going to say something you might not like to hear, but it's kind of a real perception, not just of my own. It seems like when a man is asked to do something, it becomes something he can do and accomplish. When you ask a man to come to church, basically what you're saying is, would you come and sit? Are you guys thrilled about that? No. I want to be useful. I want to do something. I find my way through life by what I accomplish. If that makes me bad, there's a lot of bad people out there. But today we have and I'm going to use a word you might not like, but we have kind of feminized the church. And men have kind of stepped back going, okay. Okay. Thank you. When you call a man and it goes like this, there's an eek. And uh, my name, I usually know it's a spider, it's a mouse, and I know what to do. I come and I take care of it. <laughs> and then I get this look sometimes. Oh, you killed it. What did you want me to do? Oh, It's not that earth moment. It's not Sunday night and the, the insurance of Omaha coming on to tell you how great the animal. Come on. If you want a man to do something, usually he does really well if it's action involved. If you're asking him to come and think and feel, oh, well, you might try that. But give yourself plenty of, of uh, time to, to get the result. When you call a man, you call him to action. I don't know if you have grandsons or not. I had daughters of my own, and then I had grandsons. You don't have to ask them to get active. In fact, until, well, if you want ours to kind of chill out, you put a screen in front of their face, and they're kind of... <laughs> I'd love to take a picture of my boys when they're sitting there. It's kind of like... <laughs> dumbest look. But you... Action is something that's normal. Ladies, I, I don't want to be brutish here, but men were given something by God to protect. And sometimes that means that we have to go outside of feelings. We don't have the feelings first. That's what you're there for. And sometimes we're called to action Sometimes we're called to fight for things. Now, I'm not saying fisticuffs. That, that may be there, but when was the last time you looked at your husband, ladies, and you said, that's my man, and he's willing to fight for me and my family? And if that means helping me walk, 
if that means taking me to the doctor, if that means cleaning the garbage out of the, the garbage can, whatever it is, I can take action and do it. You know, guys, I don't think we're asking enough of guys when they come to church to have action, to be willing to fight. Well, I'm going to ask you to fight for something. Are you willing to battle and fight for your legacy as a godly man and a godly father? Maybe you haven't heard the call to come and fight yet. You know, I, I was talking to Dave or Steve a little earlier, and I said, you know, when I would watch fights, how many of you remember the, the fights? Maybe they don't do that anymore, but when I was in school back in the dark ages, sometimes the boys would get in a fight. They'd go down to the library park, and they'd duke it out. And it was always kind of crazy. There was this big brute, and then there was this little guy. And you'd think, man, that big guy's going to cream that little pup. And sure enough, wham, bang, and he'd knock him down. Little varmint would get right back up and come right after him. And he'd keep doing it, get knocked down, get back up, knocked down, get back up, knocked down, get back up. And you thought, thought after a while, did not he learn anything? And then the next thing you realized is, I don't feel sorry for the brute. I feel a little sympathy for him, but that guy keeps coming. He's a fighter. And so what looks like the world looking at this guy being a loser because he kept getting up and doing it again and trying again, I found out that there's, there's a lot of different ways to lose and there are different ways to win too. Guys, some of you quit at the whiff of the first punch. You came to church, you tried the church thing, you got a few things wrong, you went back home, lost your temper once, you didn't act like a total Christian all at once and, and you just kind of backed off and quit. Well, let me tell you something. Your legacy and those people who are watching you have something to say about that. Don't quit, guys. Are you still breathing? And there's a fight to be had. I got a card, Father's Day card, from our daughter in Texas. Whew. You're a strong and steady, trusted presence. Whoops. Dropsy. In our family. That is a compliment and expectation. And guys, once that she identifies this, the fight's got to be on. Today and tomorrow and the next day. A steady presence. Guys, you have something to do. You don't just hold down a seat at church to make your wife happy. You're God's warrior out here. You got a job to do. I'm grateful that you can call a man and he comes with action. I remember one time I had taken my 55 Chevy motor apart. I was going to make it hotter than hot. And I got this new set of power packed heads. It was a, guys, some of you might even remember what I'm talking about. It was a 265 Chevy engine V8. I found a set of 327 power packed heads that I was going to put on that because I found out they'd bolt up. And then the next thing I knew, I'd con my dad into letting me put a four barrel carburetor on it. I was a poor kid, so all this had to come. Well, I got it all messed up. I, I started it up, and it just backfired down the road. Boom! Boom! <laughs> oh, I was cool then, wasn't I? And I'm thinking, there's no girl that'll ever get in this car. <laughs> so one morning, I worked at a gas station. What a school kid went to the gas station, and I went in early, very early in the morning, trying to put, take that motor back apart and put it back together right. And I look over my shoulder, and in walks my dad. Now, my dad, at this time, he'd been a farmer. He'd been a, a worker over in Portland, Indiana, cold water, all that. But he was a preacher in my mind. And he walks in and says, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm trying to replace the head gasket. I think I blew the head gasket. And he said, well, are your heads warped? And I went, what's that mean? He said, well, did you have them checked? Did you take them out and have them planed? I'm going, where did he learn this stuff? Well, because he tried it all himself years and years before, but I didn't know that. 
But anyway, my dad says, let's put the old heads back on and call it close till you figure this out. And so dad helped me put it all back together. And before 6.30 a.m., we had that dude running. And I was so shocked. My dad knew how to do that. So I went home and I told mom, I said, I didn't know dad could do that. And dad heard me. And he stuck his head around the door and he says, and don't you ever take that engine apart again. <laughs> when you call a man, expect some action. If you don't expect some action, the man won't show up or what of him will show up isn't something that is anything more than a lot of thumbs because we do best when we do. Today, I can remember back when I was a kid, and we, uh, this is crazy, but when we lived in West Virginia, Dad left Bible college and went to a place in West Virginia. They still used horses. In some of the area, they'd bring horses out of the mine to work with, and I, I was like second, third, fourth grade. But I remember when I'd ride up to the hill behind this horse on this thing they called a mud boat, I'd ride up there, and they had a plow stuck on it, and on that plow, there was this real sharp thing and when he hooked the plow up, I noticed and I thought to myself, that could hurt somebody. And the Seymour Ellis told me, he says, well, that's so that the horse gets the notion not to back up. Because if they think they can't pull it, they'll back up, but they, they've got to have some encouragement to move forward. And he said that goad on the back of there is all the inspiration a horse needs to keep moving forward. Guys, there are some goads in this life, and we're, bound, we're finding out about it. We are watching the absence of fathers destroy lives. I, I, I started to come up with, and I could have, the statistics are mind-boggling. Now, let me get a little graphic to you, but hold on to this it only takes about 20 seconds of actual action to become a dad or let me say a father but you will not finish the job in a lifetime of time of being the father dad's how you doing in all of these pictures I'm asking you, show up. There's so many dads today that are hiding behind the fear and the pride kind of mixed together. If you haven't done it right the first time, you just quit. After all, the kids are different these days and they have so many different things. Listen, it's never going to be a place where you can get voted in and be popular being a dad. Mark Twain said, my dad was the dumbest man he knew when I was 14. By age 21, it was amazing how much he'd learned. <laughs> Guys, would you like to go back and tell your dad, dad, thanks. Thanks for chewing me out. Thanks for whipping that belt out when you couldn't get through to my head and my ears. Dad, thank you for not giving up. Thanks for having a legacy of always showing up. And guys, I'm praying that wherever you think you are with your kids, that you'll get the notion in your head, I've still got to show up. In Judges, <clears throat> starting in the first chapter, the Midianites had been coming and pillaging the community. And here's this guy named Gideon. Pardon me, this is Judges 6, 11. And he's hiding from the Midianites because they've been tearing everything up. And an angel of the Lord appears to this guy named Gideon, and he said, Mighty warrior. That's like hiding in your closet and someone coming in and going, Hey, mighty warrior. Yeah, I don't feel so much like a mighty warrior. Guys, what had been said just before that in Judges 6, 11, was that the Lord is with you, mighty 
warrior. Now you can try this dad thing all on your own. You can try to be the greatest dad in the world all on your own, but you're going to fail. Every dad fails because we're human. But you're going to fail miserable unless you understand that God's power is what will make the difference. And the more you try to look cool and make it look like you don't depend on God, you're not one of those wimpy men, the, the churchy men, you're going to find you're going to keep failing. On down in Joshua, or Joshua comes actually before this, <clears throat> he identifies this man, Joshua, and he said, I will be with you. And then he says, be strong and be courageous. Dads, did you ever think it would take courage to be a dad? Man, it takes a lot, especially today. Because the dad role is not acceptable anymore. We've pushed dad out of the equation. You know, I, when I heard about all the fusses and fights that were happening down in Virginia and all the moms that were angry about what their children were being taught in school, where were the dads? Listen, if you were one of my teachers growing up, if mom came to see you as, as a teacher, it, they were looking for some correction to what they were going to correct about me. My dad went to school. It was because he felt like I had not been fairly treated. My dad was the warrior. My mom was the peacemaker. And that was their role together. And that, it, it took that to raise me. I was a strong, am a strong-willed person. And I'm challenging you to understand that you are mighty, but you've got to face it. It takes courage. Adam and Eve completed each other. It took both of them to be what God wanted them to be. You know, there's a passage where, where in Corinthians, Paul talks to the people and, and he's talking about men and women. And he uses that word, and women are the weaker. Now, wait a minute. Stop, stop, stop. In our culture today, you just heard me say something that shouldn't be said. We're equal. Well, let's jump in a wrestling match and find out. But in the picture of this, I want you to circle the ER weaker. See, it indicates that both of you are weak. And when it came to a physical issue, it was talking, Paul there was talking about the physical issue that a woman was, she would not win at arm wrestling. I, I wouldn't try all of you. I think some of you may whip me, but the general concept is, but it takes both. Men we have to be willing to live out our part of that equation to be strong and to be courageous. Are you doing your part? There's the, there's the Father's Day lecture for you. But here's the good part of it. I don't think you're happy. I don't think you're very content if you're not living in the action of courage and strength. I think that's what you want to see in the mirror when you look there. And you need strength, but you need help to get there. Have you had enough of backing up into the goads of our society? Listen, if we're raising weak men, it's because their image was weak too. There's a battle to be fought for your family. And guys, I want to encourage you to fight. And I'm not talking about the physical rumble I'm talking about the willingness to fight your fears about being a good enough dad. The objectives that your wife sometimes throws at you that you don't know how to answer. You still have to show up. What if a million, if millions of children were letting God transform them and letting them see a father that was tender and loving powerful, a spiritual warrior, walked in integrity and left an eternal legacy with you, would it change you? Would it change the world around you? If we had young men and young women that knew that dad was going to stay at home through thick and thin, would it change the culture? Absolutely. So why aren't we? If kids today could see a devoted dad, devoted to mom, 
One thing that I knew that you never did in our home is you never commented negatively about a meal that was on the table and you never said even a hint or gave mom a dirty look. My dad could go quicker from happy dad to belt out and me feeling the pain that was transferring from here to here. I knew how to treat a woman because my dad showed me how to treat my mom. Today we've got a lot of young men out there that are using women because women have allowed it. But dads haven't taught better. Guys, we got a job to do. we got a battle to fight. Godly men with the admiration as for me and my house. Guys, when is the last time you were the one that said, we're going to be in church today? You know, I see a lot of men today that will come to church when there's nothing else to do. Nothing else more important. Oh yeah, we won't be at church this week because do you understand when you're at church, guys, you're leading your family. You're saying, this is what's important. You're not the tag along, that'll make her happy. No, it's your battle. You live here, you come here, you bring your legacy here. Because you know what? The people that decided to skip church today will never have the blessing we had of being together today and praising God. There is power in us being together in church that you can't get at the side of the creek fishing, that you can't get going down to the races or you can't get going to the ball game. Guys, lead. Quit waiting on it. Fight for a difference. Fight for a change. You know, you're going to have to raise a family, guys, that are going to stand before God someday, and he's going to say one of two things. Either depart from me, for I never knew you. Can you imagine your sons or your daughters hearing those words from God? Or would it be something that you would feel like my battle was worth it? All those times going to church, all those times controlling my temper, all those times when I sacrificed. To know that your children are going to hear those words. Well done. From the father that matters. You know that prodigal prodigal son story that Steve was telling you about that's where I was going with my whole sermon this week and then I look back to see that I preached that last year but I was still so excited and all the stuff I had left I was still going to keep going but you know that story is all about the dad now well, yeah there were two boys in there but the dad was the one that that dad that loved his boys and they were both different figure that out Here's one child that is super compliant, works like a dog for his dad, but never really loves his dad. He just was always afraid of him. And so he stayed and did the work and regretted it all. That's one kind of son. Jealous of favors done for the younger son, who, by the way, was quite a brat, and ended up taking his dad's money, which Steve had told you about that, it was the ultimate insult because to ask for your inheritance before your dad had died is like saying, you're dead to me, you're of no use to me. It was a terrible insult. This kid runs away with all his dad's hard-earned money in his pockets. He goes away and lives in a crazy, rotten lifestyle and comes back. And you know when I saw that picture right there, do you know what that guy stinks like? I raised hogs. He stunk. He had just come from feeding the hogs. I, I remember when I was feeding one Sunday morning, and it was uh, Sunday mornings, things always broke. It never failed. And I'd have to hurry because I didn't want to get to church smelling like a hog. And, you know, when you fix their drinker or fix it, you were going to smell like a hog. So I know what that was like. But this guy, it says, and when he was feeding the husks, he came to his senses. I've been there. When you're doing something that is useless and, and, and is hard and is ugly and is dirty, there are sometimes you come to your senses. Guys, is there a minute when you've come to your senses about this legacy that you're leaving? It's more than just getting up and going to work. It's more than just getting up and going to church. You have a life in your hands to mold and to shape. Are you winning the battle? And if your dad didn't, give him some time. He may come around, but it doesn't change you. Are you a committed follower of Jesus? Do you walk the talk when you're at home? 
Do you know God's word? Are you a prayer warrior? Are you a brave and powerful man who shows trust in God? Is God really your first love? Well, ask yourself, am I a faithful husband? Am I a faithful father? Am I a spiritual pace setter in my home? Has God seen me and know me? Yes. And guys, I, I know you can get to this point and say, but Mike, I've got a past. Well, whoopee do. so do all of us. But you know what? The excuse doesn't hold because Jesus took care of our past at a very great price. It was his life. Guys, when you've messed up again, you go back again to the cross and you say, I'm sorry, and I want to do better. And with that, you get a reset every time, every time, every time. But you know what keeps us from going back to the cross? This big thing inside us called pride. Oh, I just can't live that lifestyle. I'm not even going to try. I'm just going to be who I am. Yeah. That's great. The world is trying to press us into its mold. It wants us to give up. It wants us to see the downside. Guys, when it gets down to it, there are times when we've tried real hard and we have these fears jump back in our head. Now, we don't want to tell our wives this, but we do have fears. What if she leaves me? Maybe she doesn't really like me. What if I lose my job? What if I don't make enough money to please everybody in my family? What if I get sick? What if I can't work? Oh man, I can't even lead in my own home. How am I going to do this? What if I go bankrupt? I suppose somebody would laugh. <laughs> I love that, by the way. What if she rejects my leadership when I try? What if she needs to be the boss? It's just going to be friction. What if my kids reject me? Well, I got news for you. At some point, all your kids are going to reject you because they are smarter than you in a certain period in their life. Peter messed up, but Jesus brought him back. You as a dad, you're going to mess up. But Jesus has a way of turning you around. And what did he say to Peter? He said, take care of my sheep. Fathers, did you ever see that your role in life was to take care of God's sheep who just happened to have your DNA and look like you and have the same name and live in your house and show up at your table? Yes, that's who Jesus was talking about. He wanted Peter to get out of the pity party of pride and get back on it. And I think that's what we all need to do. There's a story. I, I'm going to have to read this because some of it sounds almost incredible. Tiger Woods' mother is a Buddhist, and Tiger claims that he, as a religion, is Buddhist as well. His dad's religion remains a mystery. But when Tiger was nine months old, his father cut off a golf club and made it possible for him to swing before he could even walk. What was his dad's religion? Good question. At 18 months, he took him to a driving range and let him hit golf balls, hit a whole bucket of golf balls. When he was four, he hired a coach for his son. When he was six, his father entered him in a junior golf tournament. What religion was his dad? Yeah, might have been golf. Tiger's dad was a man who would stand in front of him and say, pretend I'm a tree, and he would demand for Tiger to hit the golf ball over top of him. You know what would have happened if he'd hit him. Think about what would have happened if you hit your dad. You'd found out where his temper was. Earl Wood said once, golf should go to church and count its blessings for what kind of quality kid Tiger is to lead him 
call it Kid Tiger, is to lead him in the next 20 to 30 years. I mean, all of golf should do that. In other words, he's raising such an incredible child under the religion of golf that the world should be thankful for such a good person. Um, have you read any news about Tiger lately? But as you can see, it all came up empty because golf can never serve as a little g God. Earl Woods couldn't make a trip to the house of God and now we can see the terrible impact it has on his very confused, albeit rich, son. Successful, oh he's rich. Successful, oh you ought to see him play golf. Successful, oh, he's good looking. Successful, oh, he drives a nice car. Now, it's not open season on judging Tiger Woods, but I think some things are evident here. Dad had the wrong religion. And who gets to pay for it? There's one story that's in Mark, the ninth chapter. If you start at the top of that chapter, you see that Jesus is on the Mount of Transfiguration and the, the three come together and Peter wants to build a tabernacle and all that. And he's just blown away. And they've just seen this monstrous thing happen. And they're walking down the mountain and they get back into the city. And here's a man who confronts him in the 17th verse and it says, A man said, Master, I have brought my son to you. The son had a demon, and that's something we don't talk about a lot today, but it's, it's real. Satan has been trying to destroy children ever since, ever since the Garden of Eden. So let's get this story in mind. So this demon of muteness had inhabited him. Now the Jewish people that would practice um, throwing out the demons and exorcisms, knew that they had to have the name of the demon to take power over it and pray for it. That was the way they saw things. Well, just put it in the devil's little aha categories to make the, the demon bring about mutinous. So the man could never tell them this is the name of the demon. So at the, the outset, the apostles had already tried to throw this demon out for this man, but they could not do it. And Jesus ends up telling them it has to be by prayer. But in this story, I want you to see that this man brought his son to Jesus to be healed. Dads, sometimes you have a son and sometimes you have a daughter. They're pretty sick. It might be a demon. My parents would ask me on a regular basis, has the devil got a hold of you, son? And my dad forthrightly tried to thrash the demon out. I always liked the first, dad, could you do this by prayer? <laughs> it been a little less painful. <laughs> that was supposed to be funny. <laughs> but I'm asking you, what kind of dad was this? It's a small story in the scripture, but I want you to see it's a dad who cared so much about his son and was so exasperated that he brought his son to Jesus. Dads, one of the greatest things you'll ever do, ever do, with all this life you've been given is to bring your sons and daughters to Jesus. The world has so watered down who we are as godly people that they've made it as if this is a choice. It's something extra you can add to your life. Make your, you know, knock yourself out. Be religious. No, no. It's the only way. Because there's a creator of this universe that has a right to say what happens with his creation. And he has a right to have certain standards. And he has a right to expect something from us. And if our children aren't getting that, they're going to learn it the hard way. And when they're home and you have a chance to do that is the best time when there's still some soft clay that can be 
compressed and made into a shape, but if they're older, you still don't get a ticket out. Is there any shred <clears throat> of pride that that man might have had that said, you know, I've tried everything I know to help this kid, and it didn't work? I think that dad had battles we have sympathy for when we really think about it. Do you think it was something he wanted to do to watch his son have these demon attacks out in public? Now, some of our kids do it very well today. You know, what were you thinking? Well, Dad, I wasn't. Yeah, that's obvious. But are we going to take our kids in prayer to God? I have a daughter that is not walking with me right now. And I'm not going to give up. I keep praying. Because at some point, I can't, but God can. And I'm seeing little fractures, little by little. And this has been over 20 years. It hurts. So what do I do? Do I lay down and ask somebody to feel sorry for me? Put something on my skin that makes me feel better? Take a big vacation so I don't think about it? No, it's time to fight. Remember Todd... Bremer, he was on an airplane a few years ago when some people hijacked it. And he had to make a decision as to what to do. And so they formulated a plan, and this guy was a key man that got up and said, let's roll. Guys, that's what we're for. It doesn't mean women can't do it. It doesn't mean women aren't good enough or smart enough. It just means it's our job to be the spark that starts everything. To make something happen. That's what we're about. And when we're asked to come to church and do nothing, it kills us. But we can't stop there. We need to keep working at it. A few years ago, I saw a movie. And in this movie... A man stops at a gas station and he starts pumping gas and he walks in to pay for it and comes out to watch some thugs jump in his pickup truck and take off screaming down the road. He was a fairly good athletic man and he ran and he jumped and got his hand through the window and was hanging on the outside of this pickup truck and his body hanging out in the air as it tried to sling him off. And he kept trying to fight. And in the movie, you're sitting there, and as a man, you're going, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's one of those, you, you forget where you are. And, and I was watching this guy fight for it. And then it dawned on me, it's just a pickup. Let go. He's going to kill you. Don't, just, just drop. You'll be okay. You can get another pickup. Well, finally, he wrestles and wrestles and wrestles and gets the vehicle stopped and subdues the man because they didn't know he was a policeman and he knew how to do that. And the guy opens the back door of the pickup to hear a baby scream. It was his daughter. It wasn't about the pickup. It was about saving the life of his daughter. And he forgot about himself and he did what he had to do to save his daughter. Guys, when are we going to realize it's not about the things in the world? It's about the person God gave us to fight for. And if we quit fighting, God help us. Because this generation is just beginning to show us how stupid they can be. You think I'm upset? You're right. Why, guys, are we backing up and backing up and backing up? It's time to move forward. It's what we're made for. No wonder we're not content. We buy all the things in the world. We keep ourselves in debt. We, we work extra shifts so we can make all of that. Why? Because we're not fulfilled. Maybe we're trying to fill ourselves with the wrong junk. Guys, take a good look at your pride and see where your, where your victories are. Are they in your children? Are they in your wife? Are they in your family? Are you really willing to fight for your legacy of being a godly man? From that, I went to a, a whole seminar for men. 
and I signed this thing, after we'd gone through a study, and I'm just going to read this, and you'll be glad to know I'm almost done. The resolution, me as a man, I do solemnly, I do solemnly resolve before God to take full responsibility for myself, my wife, and my family. See, man, that's what we're calling you to do. Don't just come and sit in church. It's part of the agenda of what you're trying to build in your family. Second, I will love them, protect them, serve them, teach them the Word of God as the spiritual leader of my home. Guys, who told you you could pass that on to your wife? She is a spiritual leader in her own right, but you have a spiritual leadership role also. Are you doing it? Ask your wife, how am I doing being a spiritual leader? And let her tell you the truth. And if she tells you the truth and it hurts, go back to the cross, repent of it, and come back fighting. Because God will be there to help you. I will bless my children and teach them to love God with all their hearts, all their mind, and all their strength. I will train them to honor authority and live responsibly. I will confront evil pursue justice and love mercy. I will pray for others and treat them with kindness, respect, and compassion. I will work diligently to provide for the needs of my family. I will forgive those who have wronged me and reconcile with those I have wronged. I will learn from my mistakes, repent of my sins, and walk with integrity as a man who answers to God. I will seek to honor God, be faithful to His church, obey His word, and do His will. And last, I will courageously work with the strength God provides to fulfill this resolution the rest of my life for His glory. Some of my family signed the bottom as witnesses. Guys, it's Father's Day. You're probably going to get a card because you showed up. But do more. Guys, when you're licking your wounds because your kids don't like you a whole lot because you make them do things, it may not always be a bowl of cherries especially with a strong-willed child like my own. I think God has a sense of humor because I think I have a grandson that acts a whole lot like me. (laughs) Guys, are you willing to fight to leave a legacy to be distinctively a godly man? I'm calling you out. There's no place to hide. And you're the guys that are here. Think of the ones I'd like to talk to. So I'm giving you some kudos, guys. You're here. Great. You got all this power of God available to you. What are we going to do with it? You're a strong and steady, trusted presence in our family. I got a job to do. I'm going to need some help. I better pray. God, for every man here who's felt lonely in their own home, lonely in the midst of their own family, I pray that they will go back to the cross and realize what sacrifice you paid so that we could be forgiven and have a do-over and a do-over and a do-over and a do-over. God, if there's been any Holy Spirit conviction in this room, I pray that that same strength and power is available to change we men into husbands and dads that are willing to fight for the legacy of being a godly man 
and a godly father. Lord, take these words and use them for yourself and for your glory and help us to take our world back from all the people and all the televisions and all the Hollywood and all the power hungry and all the the people who are trying to twist our kids in such different ways. God, help us to see that we were the first ones given authority under your power for our children's lives. Forgive us when we've quit. Please let us back in the battle. In Jesus' name, amen. Community Christian Church, 1944 South Jackson Street, Frankfurt, Indiana.